Do you have a dog? Because my dog's life lessons are whooping my ass. Hey guys, I'm Shin and this is Callie, AKA Cowbug, Cowbear, Big Cute, Cuddlebug, Poopy, Poop Scoop, Poopster, Poop Squad, Pupper, Pupster, Dirt Squirrel, and Licky McGee. Now I've been living with this little monster for about a year and she's taught me a lot. And it's not just about myself, but about life in general. Now, you guys know that on this channel, we're all about becoming the greatest versions of ourselves through self-mastery. And so today, I want to share those lessons with you. So let's get right into it. And stay tuned until the end for cuteness overload. Lesson number one, pay attention to the energy you're giving off. Now, our common language is energy. So how are you communicating? This took me forever. To understand because in the human world I show up as energy that's my strength big energy limitless energy all the time but in the dog world you got to be a little bit more intentional about your energy because she's just gonna mimic whatever you're putting out so if you want the dog to be not jumping around and calmer well you better calm your little butt bud lesson number two chase your dreams Fearlessly. Now this chick falls, slips, bangs herself up on the regs, but she does not give a single f She gets right back up and she continues to go achieve her goal because that satisfaction of achieving her goal outweighs all the setbacks. Now what that made me realize is that failure isn't really hardwired into our DNA like it is for us. We care so much about what society thinks that the fear of failure is so huge. Okay, Google. What's the proper diagnosis for fear of failure? On the website healthline.com, they say, if you experience adicophobia, you have an irrational and persistent fear of failing. Do you want a little more context? No, that's good. Fear of failure or adicophobia, I think plagues our human society, which really hinders us from achieving our goals and dreams. So it's refreshing to see another species relentlessly chasing their goals, no matter what comes in their way. So I wanna take inspiration from that and I hope you do too. If you're someone who's looking for help with achieving your goals, you're not really sure how to go about it, come to one of my workshops because I tackle these topics quite frequently. I will leave a link in the description down below. Lesson number three, take responsibility and ownership for how you want things to go in your life. Now, my go-to solution when a problem arises is communication. But in this case, I can't really communicate with her because she don't know no English. Hey, Callie, how you doing? Right. Cool. Good one, bud. <laughs> so if she doesn't understand you, perhaps you're doing something wrong, right? So in life, when you have problems, it's better to look internally and see what you can do differently or better instead of pointing those fingers. So I'll give you an example. We go on a lot of walks and before she used to kind of run on the street and then I would turn around and say, no, bad. But instead of being reactive, I can be proactive and before we cross the street, say easy. And problem solved. In the grander scheme of life, I think it works the same way. If you don't think things are going the way you want it to, you gotta change your actions and your behaviors to make it go the way you want it to because hope ain't a strategy. Can I just show you her coolest trick? Are you ready? Stay. So smart. <laughs> Lesson number four, patience is key. Success takes a lot of repetition. So one wrongly timed reward with a dog confuses her, right? So one error can actually be three steps backward. And that means a lot more repetitions, a lot of patience and a lot of wins to make the success sticky. Lesson number five, find the highest motivator. See, it's a classic give and take relationship. I'll give you what you want if you give me what I want. In this case, it's to sit patiently while I'm filming. So find what motivates other people and then they'll do whatever you want. Just kidding, <laughs> but seriously. Lesson number six, appreciating the little things, balls and sticks. Need I say anything more? 
Now this girl, she is so satisfied with her balls and her sticks. Um, you really don't need to give her anything else to live a good life. And I think us as a society, we really do not appreciate the little things. And I think this is just a lesson in gratitude, right? Being thankful for what you have versus what you don't, or even worse, for what you think you deserve, right? So I'm just here going to appreciate the today, appreciate the now, and be thankful for everything that, um, that I've got. <laughs> lesson number seven go all in. Regardless of how dirty the scenario is, she is going to roll around in mud. She is going to run into a stream. She does not care because she is having the most amount of fun. It results in a lot of cleanup, but hey, you're living your best life, so I can't be mad at you. A dog forces you to have an active lifestyle. An active dog is a well-behaved dog. Facts. So if you're thinking of getting a dog or a pet, I would highly recommend this book. It's called Don't Shoot the Dog by Karen Pryor. Yep, it's missing its cover because this little girl uh, chewed it up. Yep, did ya? Mm -hmm. This book is written by Karen Pryor, as I mentioned, and she is one of the greatest trainers of our generation. She walks you through how to train uh, other animals, including humans. Karen walks you through clicker training, different types of reinforcement, and how to apply it, which is extremely helpful. This book, though, is not an easy read. It, it, it has a lot of complex concepts, right? So it requires a lot of unlearning, a lot, a lot of rereading, a lot of reapplying on your part. It's more of a guidebook that you can keep referring to while you're training your dog. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you're interested. Uh, what I love about this book is Karen makes a really persuasive case for why negative reinforcement is not the way to go. So whipping a horse to make them go a certain way or yelling at your kids, it really might not be the best option because a well-trained animal isn't necessarily a happy one. Um, you know, so instead, find out what motivates the animal in question and then reward them with positive reinforcement when they do what it is that you're looking for. I think it's a reflection on our collective culture, you know, just because something has worked for years and it's yielded results doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. There are lots of animals looking for forever homes, so maybe you'll find your new best friend in a humane society near you. Hey guys, I'm at the Humane Society today with Hannah. So Hannah, tell us a little bit about the Humane Society. Sure, so if you guys don't know, we are the Toronto Humane Society, the local animal shelter here in Toronto, but we do so much more than our adoptions department. We have humane education programs, which helps young children learn about animals and how to interact with them in a safe way. Um, we also operate a pet food bank downstairs in the main lobby, which helps some of the lower income individuals um, who might uh, facing a tough time needing some food. We also have so many different programs that offer um, public services to the public for veterinary care as well as spays and neuters and vaccinations called our Public Veterinary Service Clinic. And we are so proud to say that in 2019 we adopted out 3,100 animals. Wow. Um, huge number that we are so so proud to yeah. say we were able to provide animals with a new home um, in the thousands in 2019 and we are so excited to increase that number for 2020. Having a companion or an animal in your life is a huge, huge responsibility. So somebody who's done their research um, and understands the level of commitment that is required in taking an animal is a huge consideration that would make you an amazing pet owner. Someone who's also very open and receptive to new information as things are constantly changing, as we're becoming educated in the animal welfare industry, um, staying on the ball, staying on the pulse with the newest and the latest information is really gonna put you far in advance for being um, an incredible pet owner, but also setting up your pet for success. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad you ha have me come here, check out the animals. They're so freaking cute. <laughs> this guy is, what's her name again? So this is Kimora, and Kimura. she's 12 years old, you guys, and she is ready for her forever Can home. So her? if you're interested, definitely make your way down to 11 River Street and check her out. Bottom line is animals are so freaking cute and they deserve all of our love. Now, this girl's pooped, so that's it from me. I will see you in the next video.